Hi, I'm Zach, and today we're going to be talking about odor removal using an ozone generator. Stay tuned to find out more. Here on this channel, we bring you the best tools and techniques needed to maintain and repair a house. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to hit subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about future videos just like this one. Let's dig into today's topic, odor elimination. An ozone generator is a tool that's very common in the fire and flood restoration industry, but is not very well known among homeowners and even many small contractors. If you didn't know exactly how it worked, you'd think it's purely magic, but really there's a pretty neat science behind it. Let's talk about a particular odor, what causes it, and some options we have to get rid of it. If you've ever sat around a campfire, enjoyed roasting marshmallows, gone to bed and gotten up the next morning and picked up that sweatshirt that you were wearing the night before, it reeks of smoke. What's actually going on here is the smoke particles have embedded themselves into the fibers of your jacket. Now, we have a couple ways of dealing with this. We could run it through the washing machine and use soap and water to wash those particles away. We could spray it with a fabric freshener and cover up and mask that scent. Or we could hang it out to air out outside. If we were to do nothing, eventually the smell would go away, but it would take a really long time. You see, every organic material, from smoke to fresh cut grass, has a certain breath, a certain life, a certain smell to it. And that smell is released when the material is exposed to oxygen and allowed to oxidize. If we take that sweatshirt, put it in an airtight container and seal it up, we could come back a year later and still smell that smoke because we've cut off the supply of oxygen and essentially preserved the smoke particles. If instead we hang that sweatshirt outside where it can get lots of fresh air and lots of fresh extra oxygen, we allow that oxidizing process to occur at a faster rate and those particles have the life essentially sucked out of them or rather they decay at a faster rate and eventually get to a point where they have no more smell left. The particles are still there, but you can't smell them. This is where it gets really interesting, and this is where the ozone generator comes into play. You see, the oxygen that we have in the air around us is O2. That's two oxygen atoms in every oxygen molecule. Ozone is O3. That's three oxygen atoms in a molecule. Now, O3 is very unstable, it's very reactive. It doesn't like being O3, it wants to get back to being O2. And to do that, it needs to react with something. And it really likes reacting with organic things. Now, as we already talked about, when something organic reacts with oxygen, it oxidizes. Hmm, and when it oxidizes, the smell goes away. We're onto something here. So when we run an ozone generator in a room, say it's a hotel room that's been smoked in. We turn the O2 into O3, and the O3 latches on to all those smoke particles and allows them to oxidize at a more rapid rate than they otherwise would, and it sucks the life out of them. It makes those smoke particles decay, eliminating that smoke odor. Now let's say we have a hotel room and the manager wants to convert that room from a smoking room to a non-smoking room. To do that, after giving it a good cleaning, he's gonna take and put an ozone generator in there. The ozone generator is gonna suck in O2, run it through a series of electrified ceramic plates, and turn out O3 out the other side. Now we're also gonna stick in some fans just to circulate air throughout the room and help drive that O3 into the fibers of all the carpet, the bedding, and the curtains. Anything that might be holding one of those smoke particles that could give a smell, we want to make sure that that comes in contact with our O3 so it oxidizes and that smell is eliminated. So we've talked through some examples, but chances are you're not gonna use this on one sweatshirt that you wore at a campfire, and chances are you're not a hotel manager. So what other things can you use this on? Well, it's great for eliminating mold and mildew smells when maybe a basement might smell musty. Uh, it's good for pet odors, say a, a urine smell or maybe something from a litter box. It can be good for cooking smells, maybe even some cleaning chemicals, all kinds of things that you would find around the home. Now, on the note of mold and mildew, it will remove a mold and mildew smell. It'll remove a musty smell. It can even kill mold and mildew as those are organic living things. 
But before you rely on this as the way to cure that issue, you wanna make sure and address whatever moisture is present that's feeding that mold and mildew, you need to take care of the moisture first or the mold and mildew will come back. Also, the more humid the environment, the less effective the ozone is gonna be. So run a dehumidifier, if it's a damp space, run a dehumidifier to get that area dried out and eliminate whatever the source of the moisture is and then bring this in and that's gonna take care of the smell. Another use for these that I have never personally tried, but I've heard of people using them for, is pest control. That's right. Say you have a flea problem in your house, this is going to kill any flea that comes in contact with this O3. It's pretty tough stuff, pretty rough stuff. Now, the only thing is it won't kill the larvae, it won't kill the eggs. So if you're going to go that route, you want to make sure and run this for probably a week's time, for six or eight hours a day, and so that any eggs that hatch those young fleas come in contact and they're taken care of that way. As with anything this powerful, we need to use it responsibly. So first of all, we're gonna make sure we don't use it around any people, plants, or pets. It does, believe it or not, have the power to kill a house plant. Now, in people and pets, it's not gonna do any long-term damage, but it will irritate any mucous membranes or any sinuses or, or your lungs. It's gonna make you uncomfortable. So if you're using it in a room, any, even just one room in your house, I'd suggest doing it when there's nobody home and nobody gonna be home while you're using it. And then when you go back in to open that room back up, sniff around. If it has kind of a chlorine smell, which is what ozone smells like, make sure to continue to run those fans and maybe even crack a window open and blow some fresh air in from the outside. When it comes to how big of a unit to buy or how frequently or how long to run it, that really goes on a case by case basis. This small unit I picked up on Amazon for about, I think it was 60 or 70 bucks, and it suits my needs just fine. Occasionally I'll have a small bedroom or maybe a bathroom in a rental house that I'm flipping, and it works for my needs. If you have a bigger need, maybe a, even a whole house or you're restoring a house after fire damage or flood damage, check out your local rental store. Oftentimes you can rent one by the day or by the week, and you can rent them for a fraction of the cost of buying them. I know the big ones can get quite expensive. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and join us next time when we'll bring you more tools and techniques to get the job done.